Hello again YouTube, welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today what I want to talk to y'all a little bit about are fuel canisters for backpacking stoves and elevation and why that's so very important. This stems from a post I was reading on a forum from a man who went three days on a hog hunt in Texas and he took a 100 gram jet boil canister with him for his stove and he was able to cook for all three days on that stove. The following year, he goes on an elk hunt with some buddies up in Colorado, okay? He used his stove that morning, and then again for a light lunch, went to make coffee that night, didn't have enough fuel to even get his water hot. And you know, he's like, I don't recommend jet boil. That stuff just don't last like it used to. They went to hell in a handbasket. I'd stay away from that, buy something else. Well. What he did wrong was he didn't factor in elevation because it matters. Okay. Water at sea level boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. You can also reach that full rolling boil in about a minute. But as an example, where I live, out at the cabin, 1,600 feet in elevation, to get that same amount of water to boil, the same temperature takes me five minutes okay Pikes Peak Colorado 14,000 just over 14,000 feet that same amount of water takes 20 minutes to boil why increase in elevation decrease in air pressure and also the boiling point has started to drop by then because of the reduction in air pressure if you were on top of Pikes Peak with your little stove or whatever your backpack stove it's gonna take 20 minutes to heat your water and your water's only boiling at about 180, 586 degrees, something like that. Not 220 or not, excuse me, not 212, but substantially lower. Push that a little further. Mount Everest, to boil one cup of water at that elevation because of the greatly, greatly, can't even talk, greatly reduced air pressure it takes at least half an hour to boil a single cup of water. And as a consequence, that food that says cooks in three minutes, it's gonna take 20 minutes to cook at that elevation. So you're looking at half an hour to even get the water hot enough and 20 minutes to cook something that should cook in two or three at that sea level. Does that make sense to you? So, you know that at higher elevations, your fuel is not going to last you as long and you're going to have to carry more of it. Either that or you're going to have to rely on campfires to cook more at higher elevations so you can attempt to save fuel. As an example, this is Coleman Butane Propane Mix, 220 grams. Now, if I want to know the burn time approximately on this, take 220 grams, divide by two, you get 110. That'd be 110 minutes. Now, the reason that's important because a lot of these kind of stoves burn fuel, consume fuel at about two grams per minute. Some, it's a little more. So if I want to be conservative, I can just say 90 minutes on this probably of total burn time so if i were down at sea level and i could cook something in only five or six minutes obviously i'm going to get a lot more uses out of this one container but on mount everest if it's going to take 45 minutes to cook a simple meal because of decrease in air pressure increase in altitude longer time for water to reach boiling point and the fact that water only boils or water boils at only 160 degrees Fahrenheit on Mount Everest, that is like a 50 degree drop in the temperature it takes for water to boil. But since you're cooking at a lower temperature, you're increasing your cook time. So water's taken half an hour to even get hot enough to put your food in. And that food that's supposed to cook in five minutes or less at sea level, you're looking at 20, 25 minutes at some place like Everest. I mean, we're talking 
23,622 feet in elevation. Because of the dramatic dip and decrease in air pressure, that's just it, that's the law of the land. So, as an example, a 100 gram jet boil that might make you eight or nine meals at sea level on a high place like Everest with a average of 42 to 50 minute burn time, you're gonna be lucky to be able to cook one meal out of 100 grams of fuel. And you're not even gonna have enough fuel left at the end of that to heat water hot enough for it to boil. So, as an example, let's say for some odd reason or another, you went up to the top of Everest and you stayed for 10 days. 100 grams of fuel, whether it be jet boil or whether it be Coleman or any other brand, you're, you're looking at a container per meal. So if you're up there for 10 days cooking three meals a day, you're looking at 30 containers of jet boil at 100 grams to cook for 10 days. When down on the coast, maybe you could have gotten by with three or even four. So, elevation is important. It's a good idea to research the elevation of your destination and get an idea about how much fuel you're going to have to carry if you're going to exclusively use something like this. That's why down below in the description I have included a link to a Microsoft Word document that allows you to kind of fudge this a little bit. It gives you examples of different elevations, different states and what their average elevations are and what the boil time of water is for that elevation. And with a little bit of simple math, you can determine, okay, I've got 220 grams of fuel. That's going to give me 110 minutes at absolute best, probably more like 90. And I know that every meal I make is going to take me half an hour. So this is one day's fuel if I cook three meals. I'm going to be gone for three days. So I need nine, bare minimum, nine of these. This document down there allows you to do just that. If you're even reasonably good at math, it's not too hard to figure out. Know the elevation of your destination and know that you're gonna to have to calculate your fuel consumption because it's important, it matters. Better yet, rely on your stove maybe one meal a day. Take things that you don't have to cook. Take things like Laura bars or Eclipse bars or trail mixes or anything that you can just open and heat up that doesn't have to be boiling hot. Canned soups and things like that that you can just throw on your stove, heat it up to where it's just hot enough so you get a warm meal in your belly and conserve fuel that way. Either that or campfires save your fuel because if you don't want to have to carry a ton of it, I mean, that's a lot of weight. That's a lot of extra space in a pack. That's maybe a pack mule, you know, with saddlebags and it, it gets messy real quick. So if that's it guys, you're going to have to realize that how, I, I can't even talk, higher elevations, you're going to use more fuel to accomplish simple cooking tasks because of reduction in air pressure. Okay, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Don't forget, if you like the video and you'd like to subscribe, reach down there and hit the subscription button for me. It's teeny tiny down in the right corner, but I promise it is there. If you do subscribe, you can click on the notification bell, select all notifications if you want to be notified when I upload. If you do like the video, please hit that like button on your way out, whether you subscribe or not. If you don't like it, hey, there's a downvote button right there too, buddy. Don't be afraid to hit it on your way out the door. I thank you guys very, very much for your views and your support. Questions, comments, hit me up, drop those down below, and I'll see you all in the next one.